She thought she was gone. Hi, my phone. Calling me. A snitch dropped a snitch and had a buff. And all of a sudden, my phone lost service. And her number automatically became blocked. And that access to me all the time became my plan period is from 11.30 to 12.30. You can contact me via the school phone. This is their number. And I'll be more than happy to contact you back during school hours. Okay? Anyway, oh yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing an unboxing of all the goodies that I found for my special education inclusion classroom on Amazon. I found so many good treats on a budget. I was so excited and I was like, you know what? We're gonna turn this into some content because there are other educators who need to know exactly what they need for their classroom too. So I think I know what this is already, but I'm hoping it's not what I think it is because if they is Amazon, y'all better helping them around with it, like for real. And it is, it is, it is. All right, guys. So first thing we have headphones. These are the active noise canceling headphones, and I'm probably wondering why does she need those for a classroom? Because I'm not just in a regular classroom. I teach special education. Quite a few of my students have autism. And if you know anything about their disability, you know that sometimes loud noises will overstimulate them. Um, sometimes they need help with redirection if their routine has been thrown off, if their structure has been thrown off. And a great way to help calm their nerves and to calm them down and get them back refocused is to block out all the noise, turn out the lights or dim the lights on them until they can refocus and get their self back together. I'm excited about these to see how good and effective they're going to be because... Yeah, we're gonna put these to work. We got some more goodies. The second thing we have is the P Touch Label and Organize Your Home and Office D220. And basically, this is a label maker. I wanted this because I write IEPs all year long as a kindergarten special education teacher. Know anything about IEPs, you know that once you finish them, Typically, all the students' documents go in a folder, which you keep in a file-proof file cabinet in your space, wherever you're located in the building. But the thing about it is, typically, people write the names on the manila folders. I personally like to be a little bit more organized and neat than that. And so, I was like, you know what? We're going to get this, and this is going to make file organization so much easier and neater. And so I'm excited to go ahead and create my labels that I can put on my new folders that I'm going to transfer over for the next school year. And I'll do an update on this to let y'all know how I like it too. Ah! Next, next, next. Yes, yes, yes. I'm so excited about this. I hate so bad that it came in after Black History Month. But you know what? It's okay. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Because a cultural inclusive classroom is all year long. And so, that being said, I ordered the ABCs of Black History by Rio Cortez from Amazon. I am so excited to share this with my kindergarten students. I want them to see themselves in the illustrations and them to find some kind of familiarity with the stories that I read to them. Now, don't get me wrong. I read culturally inclusive stories all the time. But when I saw this, it just warmed my heart. All right, next, guys, we have label tape. And that's to go inside of our brother machine. We have to order them separately. Of course, we have scissors, adult size. You never know what things you may have to cut, shape, when you're decorating your doors, your bulletin boards, or things of that nature. Yeah, this box is big. <gasps> yes, yes, yes. Okay, so you remember, y'all, we were talking about the label maker. Okay, so now I can show you like a visual aid. I'm probably going to eat this to make them go together. All right, so the label maker is going to allow me to be able to print out the little bit of piece of paper that goes right here on the folders. And in these folders, you put all your students' information as you write the IEP. And at the end of the year, when I get ready to transfer them over, 
everything like their comprehensive assessment their individual education plan from this year and for the one for the next school year um the eligibility report all of that stuff will be in here and like i said i just hate to write their name on that little piece of tab right there i just think it looks so tacky so now i don't have to because i can type it up print it and bam we're gonna put it right there and also i just want to take a second to acknowledge these folders these are so much better than the old-fashioned manila folders that a lot of districts typically use and i say that because this allows you to be a lot more organized with all your students information because a lot of times depending on how organized the previous teacher was you just get all kind of things just shoved into a folder and they pass it to you and it's up to you to go through reorganize find out what happened when what is attached to this year and all that and it's just too much mm -mm. y'all i feel like i'm talking a lot please don't face forward on me <laughs> all right so next we have sharpies guys and these are in the multi-color now for my district everything that i do for special education has to be done in blue but i have to do a lot of writing a lot of note taking and these have a fine tip they just feel really good and expensive and they don't bleed a lot and so if you are a pen person and you hadn't tried these invest two packs of those that's how much i like them sharpies again um here we have the highlighters and i don't think i've ever had these this type of sharpie highlighter before but i really really like highlighters they come in handy like when i have like to-do lists or like check off points that i have to do for my roster every month and so and i like to grade with highlighters too like whenever my students finish an assessment and i grade it before i submit it to the genet teacher typically i like to go in with a loud color highlight it just adds a little bit of vibration to the document or the paperwork or whatever so yeah Let's get into it. All right. Oh, these are so important to me, guys. Let me show you how they work. It looks like they're already open. You just take one and you lift it and you pull. And when you do that, you can tab it on any kind of paperwork all through the different pages. And so in specific, when I use them, I put them like when it's time for my parents to sign like off on documents. And I want to make sure that I don't skip any important signature pages. So I mark on every page where the parent is supposed to sign to make sure nothing is omitted. Did anybody else catch up on Love is Blind the way I did? Because, y'all, yeah, I was so sad for, for AD. Like, I know she just really thought that Clay was going to marry her or whatever. But... He kept saying he wasn't ready, you know, and he proved he wasn't ready. Yo, I did all that to open one box just to have to go in and open up another box. I was making sure what's gonna happen to this package. Next, we have the premium gel roller bowl print bowl point gel pens. These are my favorite pen, period for work i buy these every year i like how smooth they write now they will bleed on you so you have to be careful with them but they just look so nice and neat whenever you finish especially if you're a person that likes to write in cursive so as i was saying earlier too everything that i submit to the special education office for my district has to be in blue ink so i always make sure that i have an abundance of blue ink pens so i ordered two containers of these and each have around 40, I believe, in them. And so this should last me the whole school year. But in between IEP meetings and people popping in your room, pens tend to disappear on you. Where they go, I don't know. I guess they go in heaven or whatever. But yeah. So every year I have to get more. Every year I have to get more. This box is some really good stuff. And I know what this is already. And y'all don't tell me. <laughs> y'all didn't get it in another box. <laughs> y'all, when I say they was making sure that when nobody gonna get this stuff, 
Like, oh my goodness. Like, y'all. Like, really? <sighs> so, y'all really took me 10 minutes to open this box. But anyway, let me show you what's on the inside. Making sure nobody gonna steal none of this. Finally, since I got all the packaging off, these guys are important for every teacher to have, especially if you're teaching grades K through second. Specifically, I like them for my classroom because these are basically like dividers. Because in my room, the way it's structured, and I need to insert a clip so y'all can see that. I have like tables, so there's really no privacy when they take their test. So I always insert these to make sure nobody can see in, nobody can see under or over to make sure that no one gets the itch to cheat. Not that any of my students would do that. Thank you, Amazon. <sighs> y'all. <laughs> I celebrated too fast. Y'all look, look, these people put more boxes than a big box. Thought I was doing something. I say back my thank you, Amazon. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. So I ordered this for my desk at work. And I have a lot of files. For instance, um, I keep a file strictly for procedural safeguards. There's another file for district testing. Another file for parent contact logs. And so all those things add up and certain things I like to have right at my fingertips where I can just reach over and get it versus digging the file cabinet for it. And so that's the reason why I ordered this. Uh, it's kind of bigger than what I thought it would be, but that's fine because my desk is relatively large. All right, so we have dialogue in between opening these boxes for story time. Guys, this was probably about five years ago. And I was young and tender. I mean, I'm still young and tender, but I was really young and tender. And um, I believe in parents having my phone number. The way I look at it, I'm with your kid for eight hours a day. You may need something from me, even though I'm not their generated teacher. And so one parent abused it. And she thought she was gone. Called my phone, calling me a snitch, dropped a sn and add a buff. And all kind of old nasty words. Girl, all of a sudden, my phone lost service, and her number automatically became blocked. And that access to me all the time became my planning period is from 11.30 to 12.30. You can contact me via the school phone. This is their number. And I'll be more than happy to contact you back during school hours. Y'all, this is so, so, so cute. Oh, and it rotates. So when I put it on the table, the girls can automatically go for the pink if they need to like anything that I like or whatever color. But uh, this is perfect for first, for kindergarten, first, second, and third grade. Uh, yeah, this is my favorite thing that I've ordered out of everything. Isn't that crazy? You can tell I'm a real kindergarten teacher. One more big one. Okay. But anyway, back to our earlier story time. Yeah, our relationship quickly change because I'm the type I don't mind working with you at all. I don't mind you contacting me, but come respectful. And it was never an issue between me and the student. I love that child even to this day. But um I do believe in setting healthy boundaries wherever you are. And guess what? That parent learned today. Or that day. All right, anyway, moving on. I actually got two of these. And basically, the battery operated. And the way I'm going to use it, like if I say a question, they're going to go bump and hit the buzzer. And whoever hits the buzzer first gets to answer the question. One, it'll teach my kindergartners and my first graders how to take turns. Two, I feel like it'll help out with sensory, fine motor skills, being able to move quickly and adapt. And three, it's a good way to keep discussion organized and get fun, even though these are very young learners. So I'm excited to put this to work because one of the most favorite games that my students really like to play with me is the sight word, a speed game that I put together. And so I have a deck of cards and I pull the card and whoever calls the card first gets the point. But when I say I have some 
that are so close to it. And it's like, who said what and who said what first? And so I think this would be a good way to help me to judge who said what fastest to make sure that the game stays fair and transparent. And at the same time, everybody has a little bit of fun. All right, anyway, moving on. Oh, I got my second book. I'm so excited to get my hands on this. Ever since I saw that Russell and Sierra Wilson wrote this book, and it's called Why Not You? The Sky's the Limit. Guys, exposure is so important, and to teach students, especially students of color, brown skin kids, that there are no limits to their life. And so I'm so excited to read this book to them. And just so you know, I love Sierra and Russell Wilson. They're one of my favorite celebrity couples, guys. We're going to read this as soon as we get back from spring break. I can't wait. We're going to do open story time. Yes. All right, here we have notebook sticky notes. And so it's a notebook, but at the top is a sticky note attached. I like these when we have like PLCs. I was going to use the pink one, but I don't want to waste the pink one because pink is my favorite color. It's the name Pink Card. But like when we have PLCs or whatever, and typically like they'll provide like an agenda or things like that. And I want to write on it. So I'll take these and I'll attach it to whatever handout they give me so it can stick to it and I can still get out or write down the things that are most important. More tabs for the sign here. I had one pack earlier, but these actually say sign here. I'm so excited about that. Like I said earlier, perfect for IEPs or anytime you have a meeting where people have to sign their name. It just saves a lot of time and helps you ensure that you're organized and you don't skip any places where you need an important signature. I do believe it's state as well as nationwide. For an IEP meeting, you need a general educator, an administrator, the parent, unless they, you know, agree not to come after three attempts, according to the state of Mississippi, as well as um, special education teacher, right? And the child itself, if the student is 14 years of age or older, at that age, you have to start inviting the student. And I do believe that's to ensure that they have some say-so in their educational process. I do think that's important because in the state of Mississippi, transition plans start when kids turn around 14 years old. And so at that point, they should start to know or at least be thinking about, you know, what's next when you leave beyond these doors. I really feel like a lot of the issues come in with students because I know my first year when I taught and hopefully things are better in that district now. A lot of students didn't have a clear path for what they were going to do once they left the doors. And I don't just mean like students who receive services via special education. I mean like students, period. You know, everyone. There were some students who were telling me that they were going to college and they couldn't read. I mean, like I invested so much more of my time after school just as much as I did I want to say in the classroom a lot of days because the gap there was so wide and I just wanted to help okay y'all they came in and I needed more because the ones I had let me tell you I get new headphones for my students every year and I don't know if they taste good or what but by the end of the year I find teeth marks on them I find them half on half off missing and so anyway yeah i have a fresh box for my kiddos multicolored of course we are ready to take our mcas they have everything that they need a whole box of them y'all ah my goodness y'all sticky notes make me so happy and i have every pastel color I probably like, oh, that girl get excited about a sticky note. What would she do for, for a Klondike bar? But y'all, I really, really love sticky notes. They make me so, so happy. Cause I'm a big person on like file organization, keeping things in order, nice and neat. I am a purple work queen. Everybody knows that. But anyway, I got all 24 of these. 
I do believe for like $10.99. So that's not bad, especially seeing how they're not like off brand, but these are by Post-it. All right, guys, so this is not your standard manila folder. The difference is this one is made completely out of plastic, which makes it more durable than the paper kind. And, um, you know, you can wipe it clean if you stain something on it or whatever, you waste something on it, it's okay. So I'm excited to use these. I think I'm gonna throw out all the paper ones that I have, or not throw them out, but maybe donate them to the front office and let them use them because I hate how nasty they look after so long. But these should keep things nice and clean and neat the way I like them to look. Everybody knows what binder clips are for. Standards keep you organized. We have these little neat baskets. I wanted my students to have their own like little center detail work and it'll include things like glue um maybe a pair of their own pens a box of their own crayons things like that which are personal and neat because i have some students that are very very picky about what belongs to them when they come and spend time with me for enrichment and if they think that someone else has their pen or someone else has dr carter she has my pen that's the pen that you said was especially for me and so to prevent all of that everybody gets their own little basket and everybody has their own little happy little goodie for me and nobody has to be jealous of what anybody else has this is a goodie uh, i like to do sensory learning from time to time when they're with me and by that i mean they get to finger paint letters of the alphabet her finger paint sight words or maybe even numbers it just depends on whatever activity we're going to be covering for that week or that day glue if you're working with small children this is the only kind of glue you should ever buy not necessarily it has to be about elmer's but stick glue or glue sticks because the other glue they will make a mess of it all over your table all over your desk all over your floor, all over your chairs. And so I had to learn the hard way my first teaching. Yeah, we don't want to buy the liquid kind. We're just going to use your use glue sticks. And so that's what we stuck with all this time. All right, and I have an abundance of these. This is basically old school multi-program handwriting tablet. And I have about 20 of these and all. They look like this. So if you have a child or students and they are struggling with handwriting or maybe fine motor skills, a good thing for them to do would be to practice writing their letters or maybe practice writing their names on these big lines. And you know, it shows you, you always start at the top on the blue, you come down on red and lowercase letters always hit the dotted line. We have more paint, but this time it's face paint. Sometimes when I reward my students who like to do fun parties and things of that nature, and those parties may consist of face paint, snacks. Sometimes um, a local establishment or restaurant will sponsor the parties for my students and give them pizza or drinks or ice cream, different things. And so I try to make sure that I buy fun things for them too so we can uh, have a big celebration and give them rewards for when they perform really well for me. And performance is, for me, is growth, period. It's kind of different in the gen ed class. And that's the only thing that, you know, I see different because like typically they have certain standards and benchmarks that every student has to meet your certain goals. And I get that that's important for growth, you know, to actually show accountability. But like for some of the students that I service, if they have a specific learner disability in reading, if they've grown 25 points for me from August to May, and I know they've given me all that they have, I'm going to reward them to let them know, I see you're here, you're showing up for me, I'm showing up for you, you're trying. So that's kind of the only thing I feel some type of way about. When it comes down to gen ed versus special ed, I feel like all students are first general education and then the services are added in. But we won't get into all that. The point that I'm making is I believe in taking care of my students, period, so they know I got them. That was a lot, huh? I was reaching back there thinking I was going to find some more, but I don't have anything else in that box back there. All right, so this is the end of this video. I hope that you enjoy doing this unboxing with me. Um, thank you so much for tuning in and have a great day. Dr. C. Bye.